Hey guys, Jesse here, and today I'll be taking a look at the Master Grade Perfect Gundam. And right off the bat, let me just tell you, this kid is, this kid is some good stuff, good stuff indeed. Um, I don't know what it is about the Perfect Gundam that tickles my fancy so much, but I just can't get enough of the design. And now that I finally have this Master Grade and I've built it, let me tell you, it was well worth it. Um, before I start, I just want to correct some things that I uh, said during my unboxing. I called this a full armor variant, and I guess that was the wrong term to use. What I meant by that was it's a design that is basically a base kit with extra armor put onto it, and usually we call that a full armor design, uh, just in sort of the Gunpla, I guess, metaverse. Um, I didn't mean it as a variant off of the actual full armor uh, Gundam, which the design actually came out after the perfect Gundam, so people were uh, correcting me on that. Another thing I'd like to correct is in my unboxing I said that Plamo Kiyoshiro, which was the manga that the perfect Gundam originally came out of, was a one-off thing by Bandai. Well, someone told me there was actually a sequel to it, so, you know, not exactly a one-off thing, but, you know, not a very long-running uh, series either. And finally, um, in my unboxing, I implied that this was the only model kit of the Perfect Gundam. That's not true either. There was an older, like a really old, like 80s model, a 1 to 100 scale kit and 1 to 144 scale kit. I don't know if they are actually from the 80s, but I mean in that sort of style, just very, very basic and simple. So um, yeah, I just wanted to get some of those corrections out of the way, but let's go ahead and start talking about this kit. And right off the bat, you'll probably notice that He's not looking so perfect yet, and that's because this is the base kit that they have you build first, and then they have you slap on all the armor afterwards. And this is sort of a feature for this kit. They actually dedicate an entire side of the box just talking about this base RX-78-2. And it looks really good. I think it's a great balance between the like newer, bulkier, I guess, proportions and the old school kind of simpleness. So I'm just going to just go ahead and... Uh, bring it in closer and take a look at it and see what I did to it. So I did a very light weathering job on this guy, as you can see. Didn't go super duper heavy, just enough to make it look, uh, you know, realistic. Um, I do feel it was a bit of a waste of time and materials just because I'm going to be displaying this guy ultimately with all the armor on. So most of this is going to get covered up, but, you know, it looks good, right? Um... And I also repainted some parts completely. The caps on here, on the uh, elbows and knees and ankle armor here, I repainted in racing white, Tamiyo racing white. All the colors that you'll see later, spoilers I guess, um, are all Tamiya paints. So when I name a, a color name, it's by Tamiya. So these are racing white up here on the caps and the ankle armor. I wanted to sort of give uh, sort of a real grade sort of color separation and there's a reason for that again as we'll see later. Um, in the head here I painted the cameras and the eyes and I painted the Vulcans here yellow. Um, those come white so if you want to be color accurate you're gonna have to just grab some paint or Gundam marker and paint that in. And I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back here because that is the smoothest I've ever painted a back head camera that wasn't on a clear piece that's right there on this uh, white piece. Just look at that, look how beautiful it is. And I did that with the fat chisel type uh, Gundam marker, that fat ass one that can barely fit anywhere. So uh, I didn't use any paint or anything to sort of touch it up. I didn't even have to scrape off any extra like red that that leaked out or anything. That's That's exactly how I put it on there. So yeah little self-centered there but hey I did a good job anyways so yeah that's uh that's all I did to this kid not nothing too too extreme or fancy now talk about the looks of this kit or at least of the base kit here uh, I think again I think it looks great the proportions are really really nice it kind of looks like a giant high grade with the lack of panel lines but I think the proportions um, are, are, are good enough that it kind of pushes it into the master grade level. To me, it's kind of on par with the uh, with the HG Revive in terms of the perfection of the proportions. So, yeah, and it's got it's got enough detail here and there to make up for it. 
And of course, all the colors are really, really nice. Uh, the yellow in this is actually a little, little subdued than the than regular um, Gundam yellow, so it's really nice. Uh, talking about the build on this guy, uh, it was weird, very weird, uh, unlike any Master Grade I've ever built. Uh, so there isn't a complete inner frame in the sense that the structure holding it all together isn't all gray. And yeah, I don't know how to explain it. It's just strange. Uh, like you can't, this leg can't be held completely together uh, without this thigh piece, I believe. And this uh, cap piece here is actually part of a really large piece that actually incorporates this piece of armor. You can see it in the unboxing. And it has all inner frame detail like pistons, rivets, and struts and stuff, but it's all white. It's all one piece. So it's it's weird. It's a very weird design. And the arms, like the whole chest is strange because it has to do this in order to make room for the larger shoulder pieces for the armor. And this doesn't swing forward or anything. It's only meant to go in and out. So the entire chest is just like one piece and another piece clamped together over a rail to make this possible. So yeah, the articulation, as you can imagine, is, isn't all that great. And uh, yeah, again, just, a, just very weird, very non-standard master grade build. Um, but in the end, it, it is structurally sound. It isn't loose or anything like that. And the articulation is, is okay. Uh, I think the biggest point of articulation that disappoints me is the head is just on a ball joint and I would like a little hinge at the bottom so I can make it look down a little bit further, but it's okay. Uh, the Of course the arms aren't going to swing up or down, it's just on a peg which is disappointing so you're only really going to get 90 degrees here. Yeah, even the shoulder armor can't really go up because it starts to run into this. I suppose if you pull it out you can get a little bit more, kind of like that, but I don't know. You'll never be you'll never be doing that with, when the armor's all on it. Uh, there's no ab crunch or anything. It's just on a ball joint, and the cockpit does open up, but you actually can't open it when the full armor is on it. So I didn't even paint the pilot. <gasps> Blasphemy. And the legs or the hips, I should say, are on ball joints. So of course you're not going to get a great spread, and you're not going to get a great thigh swivel, but it's enough for the full armor, so which I, I imagine most people are going to buy this and display it with the armor on. And of course you've got uh, double jointed knees, actually these work just fine. And the feet are a complete one piece, but they get really good motion, but there's no toe joint or anything like that. Uh, something I forgot to mention are the seams. Uh, you've got on the main Gundam itself, you've got two seams, you've got one running across the head here and Honestly, that seam never ever bothers me for Gundam models. I mean, it's nice when they make this like a separate piece and get rid of that seam, but I don't know. This, this seam just doesn't bother me at all. Uh, you do have a seam running here that technically needs to be wiped out, but I didn't do it because my full armor is going to be on here and it'll cover these up. So I didn't feel the need to, to fix that seam. And yeah, that's about it. You'll notice that there's some of these panels and such that are uh, separate and these are all for the, for the full armor and it's kind of crazy. I think it's a little over engineered. I mean that thing's got to flip almost an entire 360 degrees to open up and you've got um, other pieces on the Gundam here. This crotch piece is going to open. These knee pieces are going to open to allow the full armor or the armor pieces to go on here. See I keep calling it full armor and it's not full armor but you guys know what I mean. Um, so I, again, I think it's a little over-engineered, but um, it does look good if you just want to display it like this for whatever reason, or you want to do sort of a half armor display, which would be pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and slap on the armor pieces and we will, oh, one more thing I just want to talk about. Uh, the hands are three, one and a thumb, but there's no peg. And that's not a problem because this gun kind of doesn't hold anything. The only thing it could hold are the beam sabers and they fit just fine, but it doesn't actually have any gun or, um, or extra accessories to hold, so not having a peg in the hand is just fine. So like I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and put on the full armor pieces and we'll see what I did to make this guy look a little bit different than the average color scheme. 
So what you're looking at now is the perfect Gundam in the manual, which should be pretty obvious. But I just want to ask you all, doesn't this design just scream like strong, like bulky, and like powerful? Well, to me it does, but the colors certainly do not. It's just too toyish for me. So I decided to change it into this. Yes, look at this guy. Look at this fucking guy. Is he not gorgeous? Is he not the most baddest, toughest son bitch you ever did see? Yeah. Yeah, this this does it for me. Alright, before I tor uh, toot my horn too much, let's go ahead and talk about what I did. Let's talk about the colors first. So the green is a British green. The orange is bright orange. The red on the side here is Italian red. And I actually did a gloss coat on it because... I don't know. They really reminded me of like the exploding barrels from like Crisis and Half Life 2. So, and I thought it looked pretty cool with the different like textures of matte and gloss. The gray you see here and here and all on the backpack is German gray. The chest here is that racing white, and it's like the one place that I really messed up on the paint application. Look at that pool of paint there. Ooh, Jesse, you hack. And then this is racing white here. So, and then the white on the shoulder is unchanged. That's just the plastic. Um, but yeah, and then for the weathering, I actually did things a little bit differently, as you can see. Um, I tried a bit of chipping with black, and then I did some dry brushing of silver, um, just very light. Wanted to look just slightly worn, and I was trying to get sort of that different level of wear and tear, if that makes sense. So. The paint, like the black represents the paint just coming off a little bit, and then the silver is like down to the bare metal, like past the primer. And I think it came out okay. And then I did a sort of wash of enamel, testers enamel rust, to sort of get that streaking and uh, brownish effect. Just kind of wanted it to be dirty. Not really rust, but just dirty. And then for the orange, I kind of did the same thing, but I didn't do the wash, I just did... Um, Tommy is Weathering Masters of Soot just pulled down on it. And I also used Tommy is Weathering Masters uh, Rust, like Dark Rust, and kind of highlighted the streaks a little bit. So you can see kind of like there. On the feet, on the gray, I just did uh, black and silver. And then on the feet here, I used that light sand from the Weathering Masters to uh, just make it a little dirty. Uh, I spent a lot of time on the barrels here. I, that's all done with a very fine brush and a sponge. And uh, this, I just spent a lot of time on these barrels. I wanted them to look really realistic, and I think they came out pretty good. Um, what else? The cannon here. Uh, interesting thing about this cannon. So in the manga, the original manga, it's a water cannon. Uh, then it turns into sort of a live am uh, ammunition cannon. So one that like uses gunpowder or whatever. Um, and then it turned into a beam cannon. So mine's definitely not a water cannon, but it's one or the other. I don't know. It's up for you guys to decide. I think I'd rather have live am ammunition. But anyways, I uh, used the Tamiya's Weathering Master just to give it some character here, you know. Make it look worn. Uh, the only sticker I used uh, from the foil sheet was this yellow reflective sticker because there's a clear piece that goes in front and it gives a really nice sense of depth so oh this antenna here and some other parts are also Tamiya gunmetal and this chrome part is a, a paint pen a I, forget, I don't know how to say the company name but it's a chrome paint pen it's like Molotov or Molotov just search chrome paint pen on Amazon and you'll find it it's called liquid chrome um, aside from that uh, I used all the decals pretty much um, just uh, they're all the sticker decals and they look really nice but you have to trim them so I trimmed them and as you can see I didn't really follow the guide from the manual for the for the decals because you just don't use a lot um, but they give you so many extras uh, just a ridiculous amount of e extras so on this sheet you actually only like officially through the manual you only use about five but look how many they give you. They give you so many extras. This entire like lower half, they don't tell you to use, but it's just all up to you. So um, I, gave, I had a little fun with it. As you can see, there's a lot of arrows and stuff. So 
I added a whole bunch myself, so you'll see that here in a second. Um, and then for the stickers, you actually get a bunch of these Kiyoshiro stickers. Uh, you get some, they're all, you know, pairs. You get one in the newer style, one in the very old style. I had to use one. I had to at least use one because it's just very, it's just sort of an integral part of the perfect Gundam. I used it right back here on the backpack. So, um, and then I, I forgot to mention I did, I did a lot of detail work on this backpack because uh, it's it's a very detailed backpack. Uh, I think my favorite part of the decals and stuff are, is right here. I love these stars. I, I just can't see this British green without stars on it. I Maybe mean, I played too much Call of Duty two or something back in the day. But in any case, uh, let's actually talk about the full armor. You know, let's review it. Um, it it's very, very easy to put on and it's very simple. It's, most of this is just two pieces come together and the legs in particular actually use rubber uh, spacers to kind of give it some more uh, width from the leg, from the legs. Um, but yeah, it was very easy to put together. I just, it took me a while to get the review out because I was painting everything, but there's, it's just a lot of big pieces um, fitting over the Gundam. So I almost forgot to mention the seam lines. Uh, there are seam lines on this armor, but listen guys, you don't need seam lines, all right? Just grab yourself a little bit of extra thin cement and, and wipe them out. Just wipe them out. Um, there's a seam line going up and down this barrel. It's gone. The, there's a seam line between these two armor pieces. That's gone. Uh, and there's a seam line that runs across the top and bottom of this uh, tank or whatever. It's gone. And there's a seam line that runs up and down this uh, thing because this clamps over the sensor. And that's gone. So, very easy to get rid of seam lines, guys. I have a tutorial on my channel if you need to learn how to get rid of them. But trust me, get rid of them. So, uh, the design is really nice. Of course, I'm a huge fan of it. The one thing I don't like are some of the things on this backpack are a little, well, ugly. This is just like a block. And this is just a blog. It's just very simple shapes, you know, no no panel lines or anything. I think I should have scribed some, but I wasn't really thinking ahead at the time. But yeah. Uh, in terms of articulation on... Well, in terms of articulation overall, I mean, it's still there, but you're not going to be moving this guy, man. Especially after I painted it. Uh, it's just... It's big and bulky now, so it's going to be hindered a little bit, but not terribly. Uh, the cannon's really nice. can go all the way up come all the way down just be careful of the v-fin and of course it looks great um, and it can actually go side to side a little bit uh, the this sensor thingy uh, can actually go in and out but since I painted it, I don't want to scratch the paint as you can see I did a little bit of green painting in that or in that sensor so it's really cool um, but yeah these black pieces here this is all rubber these little tendrils and stuff this plugs into an accessory which is why this is just hanging out over here but yeah this goes into as you can see this goes into the beam cannon or whatever but yeah very very cool so let's talk about the accessories um we'll start off with the non you know gundam related stuff if that makes sense so we have a uh, little figure of Plamo Kiyoshiro here, very nice, super detailed. You're going to have to wipe out some seams and uh, when you plug this guy together, but there's that. You get two beam saber effect parts, which you see I haven't cut off the tree here just because I'm not going to be using them, but um, there's actually three beam sabers this guy comes with, but he can only ever hold two at a time, so it's okay that there's only two. Now we get onto the stuff that can actually go on the Gundam. Uh, let's start off with this shield. So, very, very uh, familiar shield, as you can see, uh, just in a different color. Uh, as you can see, I use the decal here, Perfect Gundam. And according to my friend, who lives in Japan, uh, this says, Crafto Man, which literally translates to Craft Man. Uh, I have no idea what that means, but I just, I just know I had to go on my Gundam somewhere. Um, but as you can see, the back here is very non-traditional. Uh, that's because it's just, it plugs onto the Gundam very strangely, as you'll see. Uh, you've got your beam saver storage here. I don't know why this one's so loose, but 
that's where those go. And then you got these little mines. So these are mines. Only one pops out though. So the rest, I'm not going to try to pop it out, but the rest are is they're just one piece plugged in there. I suppose you could cut them and you'll have four individual mines, but I don't know how many people would actually be using them. And to plug it onto the arm, you got this little connector. And as you can see, the arm has like this little notch here and the uh, shield has a little notch here and you're going to sort of line it up. And to be honest, this takes, it's a bit of trial and error, but there we go. It's not too terribly difficult, but now you got a shield for your perfect Gundam. It's very cool. I can swivel here and it's very nice. So, And next you get the twin beam cannon or rifle. Let me see. Okay, neither. It's a twin beam gun. It says so on that uh, decal. Uh, I love the design of this thing. It's just fucking puny. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, plugs onto the arm with the exact same connector. And the rubber tendrils there go into the these little holes here. So let's get that on the Gundam. It has the same deal. It has like that notch and uh, plug. So, let's go ahead and... Oops. Sorry about that. Plug that onto Gundam. Yep, and now he's finally got a weapon. You know, aside from the big ass cannon on his arm. And like I said, you're not going to be articulating this guy too much with all this armor, but he looks awesome. So let's go ahead and plug these in. Boom. And boom. And yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, for the painting on this, just want to mention that these barrels are, are Tamiya gunmetal with some uh, weathering masters on the end to make them kind of look worn. But yeah, that's looking pretty damn tough. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. So um, that's about it for the perfect Gundam. Uh, do I recommend this kit? Yes, of course. Uh, by three. Um, do I recommend the colors? No. So if I were you, I would repaint this thing in whatever color scheme you want. And again, they even encourage you to customize because they give you so many decals. You know, make it your own, make it unique. Um, but for me, this was so much fun. I'm really, really pleased with the way it came out. Um, maybe too pleased, <laughs> as you can hear from me, uh, kind of boasting my ego here but uh, no it, it really was a lot of fun and I, I took all the proper steps you know priming painting and weathering and decaling and doing everything right so as you can see it paid off at least I think it did so so let me know what you guys think and uh, let me know what you think of the perfect Gundam uh, is it not is it the perfect design well yeah yeah it is well thank you guys for watching and I will catch y'all next time Bye-bye.